Everyone's heard of the Olympics. You know, when all these top performing athletes come together and go for the gold. Well, it's a no brainer that they've spent years of dedication and training to get to that place. In a way, working around a farm is much the same. It takes practice to master the skills needed to maintain the gardens, livestock, and landscape. Of course, the rewards aren't screaming crowds or gold medals, but they're worth it just the same. One of the morning rituals in the early spring is to collect eggs for setting, which is different than collecting eggs for the market. And so what I've collected here, about 25 Silver Lace Wyandotte eggs for our Project Wyandotte. Um, what I'm trying to do is get two strains of these Wyandottes going so we can preserve their genetics and make sure they remain vital. Now here, one of the first things I always try to do is Make sure the water's clean. I always like to set the, the waterers on top of an old pallet. It just keeps them from scratching and getting debris in their water. It keeps it much cleaner. Uh, I'll actually put just a little bit of bleach in the water. Uh, it kills any kind of bacteria and can cut down on paste event, and that's when their rear end is kind of messy. So another thing that's really convenient here is that we use galvanized barrels, just uh, waste bins in each one of these pens, and I can put a 50-pound bag of their food in there so it makes it easier. We can just load them up and each one of those bags will last several, several days. And I didn't put any new food out because when I walked out this morning, there was still a lot of food on the ground. So I really want these hens to clean it all up. You have to eat everything off your plate before I'm gonna put any more out there. You got that girl? Go tell the rest of them. So, you know, those are just some of the basic things that I look for, but you know, I'm happy with this number of eggs. We'll get these to the hatchery as soon as I can. Any of them that are really clean, um, I won't touch. If they've got a little bit, if they've been soiled a little bit from uh, manure, or if there's been a broken egg, I'll probably throw it away because dried yolk or albumin in them will clog up the pores and cut down on the likelihood of the, the chick or the embryo uh, developing. So here we go, Project Dot. Healthy flock starts with healthy feed. If you know me at all, you know I'm just crazy about chickens. So it's very important to me that they're well cared for. I also enjoy answering questions about poultry to help you make better choices caring for your birds. I recently got a question from Linda Sturdivant. Linda was saying that she's got some birds, seven of them, hens that are a little over a year old, but she's only getting three eggs a day. <laughs> She lives near our farm and the weather's just beginning to warm up and she says she quit giving them corn scratch and will start giving them their mega-3 food. Any ideas? Well, yes, there are actually some things you might want to keep in mind, Linda. First, chickens, particularly hens, are very responsive when it comes to egg laying to day length. So as our days begin to become longer and warmer, that sunlight is going to activate the hens to begin to lay more. The chickens really aren't too old to begin dropping off too rapidly in terms of their egg production. The fact that you're shifting to a higher protein feed is a great idea. Make sure they've got a run where they can get out and exercise and eat lots of bugs. 
and eat plenty of grass. Good luck with your flock. Coming up, if you really want your birds to show out, they must have the proper diet. And a little later, shoeing a horse can be tricky if you don't know what you're doing. Stay tuned and we'll show you how. You ready to do this, Amos? Come on, man, you got three more. Let's go. Good job, man. All the way up, all the way up. Here we go, all the way down. That can't be all you got. You got this, you got this. You know, you don't have to have a personal trainer for your chickens like Amos the Buff Orpington to have healthy, show-worthy poultry. But what you do need is, well, good nutrition. Ultimately, the championship potential of a chicken is determined by genetics, but the animal's environment dictates whether or not its potential will be obtained. A crucial part of that environment is nutrition. Poultry feed should contain all the nutrients needed to grow muscle, bone, organs, fat, and feathers. Show Right Show Feeds is an all-in-one product for my birds. Come on, girls. From hatching to showing, ShowRite provides the proper balance of nutrients to promote optimal health and growth while providing natural color enhancers for glossy feathers and gorgeous combs and feet. Backed by the scientists and nutritionists of Hubbard Life, you know you're getting a consistent, high quality product. So provide your exhibition birds with the nutrition they need. Ready for the big show, Rocky? Let's go. <laughs> After the break, we're learning how to properly shoe a horse. You don't want to miss it. Horses are some of my favorite animals here on the farm. Why? Well, they're beautiful, they're smart, and they're hardworking. Right, Trudy? So when it comes to maintenance, like trimming her hooves or putting shoes on, things can get a little tricky if you don't know what you're doing. That's why I have my friend Sam Hildebrand give me a breakdown on how to properly shoe a horse. I'm a farrier, AFA certified farrier. Been farrier for the past mm, 38 years. Farrier is basically, they consider, it's an old English term, is a foot doctor. It's an equine foot doctor is basically what the name farrier came from. I'm taking a big pair of nippers, just regular fingernail nippers. This mare is, she's so broke to human contact that she doesn't even try to fight with you or anything like that. Taking hoof knife, just trimming out the frog, excess sole. In a regular file, whoa, Prissy, stand still. Shaping the foot. I always put a hoof gauge to get the same two angles on both front feet. I take a tape measure and I always measure from the toe to the hairline. Gives me three inches. Put the foot down. Go get my shoe. shaping the shoe to fit that horse, his foot. Well, the past, uh, we've lost all of our stamina out of these horses in the past 20 years, and they have to have shoes on them just for people just out riding them in the pasture because their feet can't stand 
going barefooted. And we take this over here. Depends on what you do with your horse. If you're showing the horse, we use an aluminum shoe for showing, and if we're just trail riding a horse, we use a steel shoe. And the difference between aluminum and a steel is about 12 ounces, and fatigue on a horse uh, is the reason why we use on a, an aluminum shoe on a show horse, and it doesn't matter when you're trail riding a horse. A steel just outlasts aluminum. Drive it through the wall, if you will. I tell a lot of people, if you don't know what you're doing, always get a certified farrier and that someone has had experience shoeing your horses because you can put a nail in the wrong way and you could mess up a horse pretty bad. Make sure it comes out wool crystal. Whoa, put it. Christy, stand still. Twist the nail heads off. Put the foot down. And bring it up on the stand. Gonna clench the nails down. Foot. Foot. I try to take the little wall off as possible. This is a clenching tool. I clench the nails over to lock them in place. Take a file, file them down. Well, there's no Nothing touching them. Run my hand over, make sure nothing can cut a horse. Sand them down. I do a little cosmetic sealant. What I file down, whoa, pissy, stand up. And that's what we have. Done with one foot. Who doesn't love rowdy, playful kids? We'll get the scoop on how to best care for these little guys right after the break. I have to say, any farm animal, when it's a baby, is really cute. Oh, these little goslings are no exception. There you go, little guy. But I have to tell you, some of the ones that really put on a show are baby goats. They're very comical. My friend Jenna Schuler shows just how difficult it can be to wrangle one of those little rascals. Children's Farmstead and we are in what we call the bottle pen which has our baby pygmy goats where people can buy a bottle of formula to come feed the baby goats. All of the babies have names. Uh, they were born here on the farmstead between January and the end of April. Uh, they all have fruits and vegetable names. There's a theme every year with the names and this year was fruits and vegetables. Um, being that there were 78 babies, we got a little obscure with the names after about 50, so they are they are all fruits and vegetables though, such as uh, tangerine and um, cauliflower and squash and so on. So they're, they're all very, very friendly. Uh, 
this was a record year for us. They don't normally have this many. I think last year they had 58, but we did have 13 sets of triplets this year that kind of added to that. So um, at the end of the year, we will adopt them out to families who want them on their farms as pets or as, uh, as just uh, companions for their other pets or already have goats. Goats were kind of a staple uh, in a 19th century farm. They provided um, meat and milk, and they were kind of a, a makeshift lawnmower as well. They'd clear out any brush that wasn't able to be done with hand tools or machinery at that time. A lot of kids being in a bigger city, such as Kansas City, um, have never seen uh, farm animals up close like this. Uh, they um, haven't had the experience of actually being able to touch them or pet them or be in the actual enclosure with them. So we're excited to have kids come in and experience their first goat experience, uh, if you will, um, and let them know that there are animals outside, dogs and cats, and they are something that we built the country on and is a big part of our agriculture. And favorite part of my job is this, just being with the animals and uh, knowing each animal's little quirks and personalities and just having that hands-on ability and it's the best job ever. <laughs>scratch the surface as to what goes on on a working farm. But I'll tell you this, it's eminently rewarding. I enjoy it every day. It's fun to connect with nature and with all of these animals. If you get a chance to live on a farm, do it. If you get a chance to visit one, do that as well. Until next time, I'm Alan Smith.